to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Uh, it's Ebro in the morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg. Give it up for John and Joe. Joe and John. The New York Times. The New York there Times. Do you guys? Are you guys a group? Joe uh, and John. John and Joe is the New York Times. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But uh, reporter. Yes. Right, Joe. Yes. Critic. John. Yes. Um, you guys um, have been doing amazing pieces for a long time for the New York Times. So first of all, thank you guys for always just being dope. Appreciate it. Uh, and being smart and not relenting on being dope and smart for the sake of like clicks or whatever, even though people have their issues with New York Times. You guys have Ooh. shown up. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know anyone. No okay. one you guys have shown up with an awesome arts and leisure, yeah. amazing New York Times, uh, 50 years of hip hop. Appreciate that. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, effortful. Uh, yeah, this is a, this a, a is big work. undertaking that you guys did here. 50 years, 50 artists? 50 years, 50 artists. Many months, four months in the making. Wow. wow. Original interviews? Are these all, all new? Of course. All original. All original. Oh, uh, well, I assume some of them are ones you pulled from other no, conversations. No, 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 no. All no, no. All. Laura, you want to run some of these names? You yeah, see because I'm really curious. I'm just going to randomly pick some names. Please. And I want you to give me some highlights from the conversation. Sure. Okay, go. some people that I haven't heard from a long time, and I'm just wow. curious to see. Um, let's go with someone like Pitbull. Yeah. Oh. Okay. This great. was a big one. Pitbull was big. So I spoke to Pitbull, and one of the things that I wanted to get out of Pitbull is he was one of the first folks to rap in Spanish and English. Yes. His pop crossover was very early in the 2000s and before people wow. took that for granted. Yep. And before people took that for granted that hip hop yeah. would go in those directions, he was directly heading in that. Yeah. He really bridged crunk into reggaeton. Yeah. And Nobody was talking to Pitbull. It was 10 years before I'd really read, since I'd read a really good Pitbull yeah. interview. He started quoting Nas and AZ. He really, but you don't necessarily always know that from the No, records. you definitely would. Only Ebro would say, of course, about that. <laughs> I, mean, like, I, I appreciate mean, that you know people that. Have known, people well, have known him for 20 years. Yeah. For but people people don't remember Pitbull. that. They don't remember that. Right. So no, many facts. eras ago. Yeah, we we I mean, were getting the promos in the mail, but right. for those people who weren't receiving the TVT records TVT from, records, from Pitbull, he just yeah. showed up. The when cool promo t-shirt. You know, if you have that, great. Oh, a dream. I'll to you. But that's a different era. But Pitbull moved on to make Spanish language records. He made uh -huh. hip house records. Yeah. He was doing all kinds of stuff in the 2000s and 2010s. We wanted to bring him into this conversation. We I wanted each person on the list to represent either a genre, a subgenre, an era, a region, a specific idea that wasn't going to overlap with the other folks. Yeah, like these these are not ranked. That's that's an important note. Like people are like, how could you have Pitbull on there but not Nas? And it's like Pitbull represents something very specific and part of the broader story of hip hop we wanted to tell. Well, and even at the top here, which I love you have him at the top, one of the first names you see is DJ Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Um, and a lot of people, Don't you know, me. there was a time in New York City that like, Prince didn't want to open up, go mm -hmm. on stage before, you know, or I mean after DJ Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Like, DJ Hollywood is one of those guys. And also, for me, having DJ Hollywood in here undermines slightly the concept of 50 years of hip-hop. Because when we're talking about the 50th right. anniversary, we're talking about one date in 1973. Yeah. Not to say that date's not important, not to say that's not a meaningful uh, moment in the genesis of mm -hmm. what we all have come to love. DJ Hollywood was talking over records before that. That's right. And so if we're talking about where did rapping come from, the, what we think of as contemporary rapping, DJ, DJ Hollywood, Hollywood was rapping call and response before, from early. more before than 50 years people ago. were calling what, what, what year? What year was he doing, did he start doing what he was doing? Depending on what you read or when you talk to him or people around him, it could have been as early as 68 or it yeah. could have been 71. Okay. So, But he would, I mean, Hollywood, I, I just don't, I mean, those that know, know, but he just does not get the flowers I think he deserves. I mean, it his is. his club routines. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't playing around when I said that. Mm -hmm. Like I literally, someone told me a story that Prince was like, "I don't want to go on after him." Mm -hmm. That's right. He can't open up for an artist because he's too good. It's too big. It's too. It was too. Do it dominated. It and was it, a thing. And at that time, you know, DJs are still they're spinning primarily. Well, not in the '60s, but in the '70s, they're moving into disco records. Obviously, you're coming out of funk and soul. Right. He's really the first person on record who is known to say, how do I elevate this? How do I talk? How do I engage the crowd? How do I bring the crowd to me in a way that's more complicated than just playing one record into the next? And so when we're doing 50 rappers, a lot of people might not think of DJ Hollywood as a rapper. Mm, right. But in my mind, this is the foundation. He's cracking he, the mic. And he actually says in here, I mean, he's had a rough life. Drug addiction, uh, financial struggles trying to get jobs, trying to get regular DJ gigs now, even still. Right. 
he's had a tough time, but he even says, look, my DNA is in everybody. Even if I didn't get my money or my flowers, I look around and I see my stuff everywhere. And that's part of the other thing we wanted to do with this project is where where you might think of the obvious person to put on the list, maybe it's Herc or whatever, you know, like the, the names you hear all the time. And then we're like, well, what about the guy next to the guy, the guy behind the guy, you know, sli- slightly off what you might expect on first Another first one look. of those names uh, you have listed here is Too Short. Oh, yeah. Which I was just having a conversation with someone the other day because we were talking about the vulgarity in rap. Mm-hmm. And how the content and the music and, mm-hmm. right. and I was like, Too Short was rapping about fucking chicks in 1986. Mm-hmm. It's nothing new. Not 96. Yeah, nothing 86. new. In a vulgar like ten, Freaky Tales is ten minutes long. Right, <laughs> a lot of tales. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot of tales to be told. A lot of freakiness. Yeah, there's a lot of freakiness and a lot of tales, and the so freaky absolutely. tales must be told. And he was independent. Mm-hmm. Yes, Which all is, out of the trunk. Get before Jive, all out of the trunk. All of. Mm-hmm. Well, we, so, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead, Laura. No, because speaking of that, one thing that popped into my mind is like you have Luke on here. Oh yeah, Incredible. Luke went to the Supreme Court. Oh, yeah. because of the same yes. thing. <laughs> one of the interesting things about both the Too Short interview and the Luke interview is I think they both understood really early in their careers, and we're talking like eighty six to ninety one. The type of music that they were making had antecedents historically, whether it's in sort of like highly sexual funk music or disco or nightclub music of the 70s. Um, They understood that they were part of a long lineage. And so Luke takes that to the Supreme Court because he understands that if he doesn't do it, basically all of hip hop is going to get roasted in the in the legal channels for for decades to come. So he decides to take the burden on. Too Short says something really funny in the interview where he's like, his mom maybe had found his rhyme book. Oh yeah, and mom like wrote him a note and yeah. said, and "Was like I like, hope you don't believe these like, things." Why are you like, like this? right? Right. This is like, really how did I raise can, this? Yeah. And Too Short <laughs> says, "Can you imagine James Brown's mom saying?" why are you gyrating like that? <laughs> right. Um, and I think him connecting what James Brown was doing to what he was doing is exactly the right kind of like musicology. Well, I don't know if it's indicative of growing up in a good home or not, but the fact that your mom wrote a note flabbergasted about <laughs> Literally. Literally. So good. was like, wait a minute, your mom wrote... She she loved you were in a loving home, but he knew, <laughs> but he knew even then that he was an artist, right. and like so that interview was done by our colleague Elena Bergeron. Elena. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had we had a bunch of help doing the the fifty interviews, um, but but yeah, just the 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 other thing is you're only getting a little piece of what people said in the finished version. You know, a lot of these conversations were 45 minutes, an, an hour, hour, hour yeah. and a half. 50 like I said, talks for two hours. Yeah, and, and Vanilla Ice was on the phone for... Yeah. I, I had to be like, all right, I'm sorry, I'm on vacation now. I gotta, I gotta go. go. You're like, yeah, bro, we don't need this long. This is gonna be an entire Vanilla Ice thing. <laughs> By the way, speaking of Uncle Luke, this is also uh, 1986. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's 1986. So the conversation. And I remember when I had to take. Yeah. And that's, and I was what, Gucci, and that's what Gucci Man says yeah. in his interview. He was like, the first tape I ever bought, $5 at the flea market, to Live Crew. And he says, I bought it because the cover was just so raunchy. He was like, it was basically porn to me. Yes. And he said, and then his mom found it and she played it for her friends, being like, look what little Radrick's listening to, like to embarrass him. <laughs> and he was like, I don't even know the music. Like, I didn't want it for the music. I just, I just wanted the cover. He must have gotten as nasty, the, he he got as, nasty as they want to be, mm-hmm. which is that's yes, the Me So Horny album, yes. which is oh the next God. album in. But those. The those None. sort of links, like that's what we wanted to draw out in this thing, is that you wouldn't, you know, you might not think Luke when you think Gucci Man, but that's that's yeah. his path. Yeah, yeah. So, so each of these names in represents some different piece of hip hop to you. In in our minds, we wanted to tell as broad a story as possible because I think some folks and some categories can get shunted off to the side, mm-hmm. get erased. A couple things we did, obviously, to be a tiny bit like eyebrow arch like we have Violent J from Insane Clown Posse mm-hmm. who I'm sure has never been played on Hot 97. Oh, uh, we had them up though. We've had them up. <laughs> though. Great. Yeah. First, yeah. It's good first, content. First yeah. time they ever it was we had them up 5 years ago. Mm-hmm. It, by the way, it did quite well on I, YouTube. It, sure it, did. People, them on Hot 97 oh, was yeah. interesting and they were so happy when they came to see us. They said it was the first time they had ever been invited to a hip hop radio station. I believe that. And that's the kind of stuff he that Well, that was when I learned about, about the gathering of the I never knew about that until that interview. And their Detroit hip hop knowledge. Oh yeah, no, they're in it. Sham, Awesome Dre, like all that stuff from the late '80s into the early '90s that really influenced Insane Clown Posse. Um, 
no one talks about that stuff in the broader context. The other thing is I went back to listen to a lot of those mid-90s ICP records in preparation for talking to him. And I'm like, if you listen to this stuff and you don't know who it is and you told me it was someone that grew up listening to Cypress Hill, like basically like someone yeah. from the neighborhood who was like, I'm trying to make a like a Cypress Hill type record, I would have believed you. Right. Right. There's nothing in the music except obviously some of the specific content. Right. But musically, it sounds very much of the day, but because of how they painted the faces and because of the Fago on stage, mm -hmm. they were absolutely washed out of like conventional hip hop. History. Well, and they end up getting this like rep, rep where I think people think they're kind of about things that they're not. Like I think yeah. people think Joking. they're on the wrong sides of, of stuff. When oh, actually, well, when, they, too. Oh. when they speak up and say stuff, they are, they're yeah. always Saying all kind all of the right, right thing, always yeah. on the right side. Yeah, like yeah. they're good dudes who yeah. are like the whole Eminem beef too. That's the other yeah. part of it. You, but by the way, you can't judge people by Eminem beef. That's yeah, true. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd be throwing away Melly Mel now. I you mean, might, you might throw away everybody in this room. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Facts. By the way, yeah. we, we, haven't, we haven't talked about the Melly Mel uh, Eminem thing on the air this week. We have to do that. Wait, what is it? <laughs> they're, they're like beefing they're actively. And, and, Eminem, and Eminem mentioned him on a record. And Melly Mel just put out. And now Melly Mel's putting out a diss record against Eminem on the week of Hip Hop 50. It's, That's actually it's wait, why it's kind of great. It's, it's kind of great, but why and I think Eminem that? hooked him up. I don't. I don't know why it's happened. Melly I mean, Mel dissed premise. him. Remember, in months ago, we, we talked about on the air. You, I think you covered one of yeah, One of us yeah. mentioned it, yes. that a few months ago, basically, Melly Mel just out of the blue was like, Eminem's overrated. He's not very good. <laughs> if he wasn't white, he'd be nothing. Yeah. A really hardcore, okay. he sucks kind of moment. Okay. M doesn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Now there's a new artist on Shady. M has a feature on his record. Oh, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. New, brand new, new. Uh, what's the guy's name again? I just was listening the other day. Um, he, he, so the verse didn't work quite yet. Well, I've heard of the guy's name. <laughs> I, I only I only know the guy. If you look at Paul Rosenberg's page, you'll you'll see that they announced the signing. So M does a verse, and on the verse, M does the M thing. He hits like the three or four people who have most recently talked shit. Mm -hmm. Lord Jamar catches one. Mm -hmm. I think Joe Budden might catch one. The game catches one, and Melly Mel catches That's one. That's on Easy Mail. Yes, on that on the Easy Mail record. There you okay. go. So on that record, he responded to Melly Mel, which, by the way, I think is kind of cool of Eminem. Oh, yeah. To, let, to give Melly Mel that. Yeah, and now, well, Eminem's like, a game player. Yeah, he loves yeah. the game sport. Player. He loves and the he know, sport. And he, and, and because he, he, loves Melly he Mel. appreciates Melly of Mel, course. he's like, yo, yo, old man, you deserve to dance with the kid. You want to yeah. get in here and go? The Not kid. The, 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 the yeah. slightly younger old yeah. man. Yeah. We, we, let's get into it. Eminem's in here, too, of course. Yeah. So, yeah, who did the Eminem interview? I talked to Eminem. And how, what did you guys talk about? Uh, he's a huge rap nerd. I mean, yeah. we know this, but, like, you forget. Like, we, we did a Zoom, and he's in his studio, and he's literally in front of a wall of tapes. He basically recreated his childhood cassette collection and he had everything and he's a, he's a huge nerd. I mean, his big thing is Naughty by Nature. He's obsessed with Naughty by Nature and he was talking about how... He, he loves Tretch. Yeah. yeah, he loves Tretch. And, is fine. and he was incredible. like, when those albums came out, I was trying to get started as a songwriter and I quit rapping for the summer. I was like, I'll never be able to do this. And you would just imagine young M like, just like Dejected, like, just yeah, like, just dejected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then just coming back and coming back and talking about how battle rap taught him which punchlines were gonna land, and that's how mm. you know he mentioned like how you gonna breastfeed me, mom. Like he was like, I knew which which lines to underline when I started recording because of the reaction I would get when I would battle in front of a crowd. That's dope. That's dope. I'm, I'm curious about the controversial and very opinionated Azealia Banks. Oh, that was a special <laughs> one, too. Azealia, the Azealia, best rap critic working. Yeah, Azealia best went rap in. Working. Yeah, she's, she is an incredible listener uh, of of music. And and she consumes a crazy amount she of does. Like. She does. I mean, in, in the outtakes, I have her talking about Pop Smoke and how amazing his voice was. Like, she's talking about Kodak Black and she started rapping his his, his verse from uh, Roll in Peace, the, the X record. She's talking about Lil Wayne and how they both had this sort of theater kid energy, this thespian thing. And Wayne and his thing talked about, like, being in plays when he when he was a young kid. Um, and, and then Azealia just did Canon, the drama Wayne record. She just did his entire verse, like, just off the top of her head uh, but she also you know she has her opinion she said I think the last line in her thing is like she was like she was like quote me on this one she was like all you new rap girlies you suck <laughs> she wants that smoke she, she wants does. it I mean it does. I don't know about all because there's some that are pretty good but when you're talking <laughs> about Azalea Banks rap skill you can say what you want about it but her rap skill 
She's fire. Yeah. yeah. Well, she, and she knows that. Yeah. And she's not scared. She knows. Yeah. She knows so much that she doesn't even really rap anymore. She, but she she says flat out, she was like, people are like, oh, you make house music now. Like, that's that's white people music. And she's like, no, nope. that's also black music. Yeah. Well, yeah. Facts. that's yeah. Yeah. And she was like, everything I do is in the spirit of hip hop, even when I make house music. So well, house she, music is, is right there. It's of cousin. course. Yeah. I just, I, I, you just, did she manage to diss a bunch of people during the interview too? Or oh, no? yeah. I mean, she, you know, the, the tangents she went on about Grimes and Elon Musk and Az- Azalea uh, or Iggy Azalea and did M- did M catch any too? She likes to throw that one up too. <sighs> she didn't go in. A, she didn't go in. A, she um, she's listen, an incredible here's arguer. Here's the frustrating yes. thing when people go at Eminem, right? Even Melly Mel and I think I, I now I remember us bringing it up and me going, but M said that about himself, like. The reason I'm so popular mm-hmm. is because I'm white. Like mm-hmm. he literally has a record called yeah. White America, mm-hmm. where he addresses yeah. that from early. So this whole like coming for Eminem because he's white, he knows. But that's mm-hmm. always been his trick, right? He get the he'll get the bro first. in the like, song like, right now. I just read quotes from it. I haven't heard it yet. Mm-hmm. In the song now against Melly Mel, he says. I'm a guest in this house, but I made the shit a mansion. <laughs> like he literally will over and over again be like, I know my role. Mm-hmm. I'm an outsider. Right. I'm trying like so it is. He really did already eight mile everybody, but they still keep trying to it's Mom Spaghetti, man. It's Mom Spaghetti every <laughs> single time. Sure. Um so, so who are some of the names that may- maybe people wouldn't recognize? Go ahead. Uh, tell us why no name. We wanted Contemporary folks, because one of the challenges. I'm surprised you talked to y'all. First of all, one of the challenges in doing this is there's a lot of guys from the 80s and 90s who are like, we're here for the 50th anniversary. They take you know, up like, all the oxygen, it's, right. and it's like you just know you're gonna hear from. I mean, and this is not a knock, but you're gonna hear from LL. LL is gonna be everywhere. He's in this package, but he's he also referenced yeah. by 10 other folks. So we're looking at the last, say, five to 10 years and saying, who's making interesting records? Who's making records that feel signature? And that last No Name album, we all really loved. And so when we were putting our list together, we said, here's someone we're gonna try to go out of our way to make sure we get. And luckily we were able to get her. And she represents Chicago, but a yep. different side of it than That's you right. would normally hear. We, we have, also have little Bibby, Bibby in here too, for drill. To, to represent the, the birth of drill you know yeah. 10 10 years ago at this point um i but, love that you have dj jubilee down i appreciate that like i don't even know dj jubilee i don't think new orleans baby oh orleans. Oh, oh yes so yes, new yes, orleans yes. bounce music pioneer yes, shout yes. out to elena our colleague who's also from down south and who interviewed jubilee jubilee was that dj jubilee that was that back that, like that ass whole up, back that ass up is, is a jubilee, jubilee record right, right, right. that juvenile remade right. and so that's another entry where i'm like a lot of people might th- might not say that's a ra- like a rapper. He's a DJ who's rapping over records, chanting, calling out dance names. But that's such a key part of the long- whole thing. Yeah, but that's a key part of how hip hop evolved. That's right. And in the late '80s to the mid '90s, when Jubilee was really getting going. It's what he was doing in New Orleans was very similar to what was happening in New York in the 70s and the early 80s. So we wanted to tell the New Orleans story. And look, you can tell the cash money story. You can tell the no limit story. We have Lil Wayne. Obviously, we know those are important. But how do you get back one step? And where did those guys get their ideas from? Jubilee. That's, That's really, really dope. Um, Project Pat, Memphis. I mean, you guys have a lot Rock of things. Marcy, obviously, Rock you know, Marcy. kind of the king of the current underground. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. like we could do Griselda, or again, we could go one step back, and it's like Rock is the blueprint, and Rock can also stand in for Long Island. Rock, you know, talking Buster about Rhymes. Buster Rhymes. School, right, all the- yeah, the connection with Buster Rhymes, the flip, mo- the flip mode days, uh, talking about MF Doom as his influence. Like, yeah. you can't have Doom in here, right? Rest in peace. Mm-hmm. But you can have somebody who's going to, like, carry that torch. Yeah, Marcy basically takes you from the most current underground artist mm-hmm. all the way back to the start of flip mode era. And, which, and it's very, that, Rosen, and very Rosenberg yeah. core. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, oh, he's extremely Rosenberg he is, he is, he is very... I mean, I remember when Rock Marcy was putting out. Rec- I remember the UN records. Yeah, yeah, of course. But even then, I didn't realize he'd already been around. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that was like in 07 when he was yeah, doing the UN. Yeah, the photos of him the on the inside uh, we pulled from back, a flip in, mode, back in back in the days. Shoot. Yeah, we really tried with photography to capture people in their earliest eras because we wanted a, a nice range. Yeah, everybody's to see pictured everybody. at their peak, like their youthful peak. Oh, mm-hmm. look at Fonte looking slim and trim in this <laughs> photo. I just saw him in a wrestling outfit the other day on his gram page, showing <laughs> chest and everything. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I missed that. Yeah, oh, so he posted that yesterday. Okay. Um, so, question. This is so amazing. Uh, is, would this, like many other things that start out as a newspaper, ever go magazine? 
It's a great question. We would love to do another version of it. We have many more words to pile in. I mean, there's whatever, 36 pages in here. You can also get this online. Uh, NYTimes.com slash hip hop 50. Yeah. All of this lives online. Yeah. So let me ask you this, because um, we did this with the 1619 project. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, would could I could we purchase like a bunch of these and like give them away? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I can. That's not a problem. Okay, yeah, we'll yeah, I think that would be dope. I think people would love to have this. Like, yeah, and this is home, like right? this is this is a newspaper section that exists for one Sunday. It lives forever online, obviously, but we also want it to be a historical document. Right. You yeah, know what that's I mean? Like, goal. all of these stories needed to be collected and put in one place. Yeah. And the other thing to note is, it's yeah. all in their words. This is all oral history. This mm -hmm. is as told to. Oh, so all so, you guys are doing is editing. You're not writing. Exactly. We're not every, hearing from every you single. Two. No. no. There's there's a there's an intro essay that John wrote, but every single word in the interview portion is words that th these people say. Yeah, this should absolutely be a book with the extended cuts of all these interviews. Right. Like, that would be a great coffee table piece for people we're to gonna, We'll tell our bosses. That and we're telling yes. management that you said that. Well, listen, tell, <laughs> you can tell them that we, all you know is you'll get, you have built-in promo already set up when it's time. We appreciate it. Because this, this is so cool. I'm psyched to go home and read it, but it's like, yeah, I don't want to, newspapers are hard to keep yeah. over time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The ink. We'll yeah, the so ink, the everything. But uh, you guys, great work. Again. This is awesome. Yeah, congrats Appreciate it. On again. This Thanks you for did it again. Um, shout to Boots. I love you, brother. Um, what a cool. And before we go, yeah. Uh, Kumo D. What did Kumo have? Yeah, what did he, well, I've never. I don't even know. So I met Kumo John, D. Our, Jonathan Abrams, one of our colleagues, interviewed Kumo D. One of the things that Kumo D talked about really extensively uh, in the late 70s into the early 80s, you don't necessarily have. 20 years of rappers to look back at and say, I want to be like this That's guy, right. I want to be like this woman. He was saying, he was looking at political figures and saying, how can I be that, mm. but in this context? Mm. Now that this new context of hip hop has arrived, how do I become that person? And using hip hop as his platform to become essentially a political and social spokesperson. Mm -hmm. That I thought was fascinating because with a lot of the younger Which guys, is what Chuck essentially lands on and brings through public and does it majorly. Yeah, but it's funny. You look, uh, there's a trippy red interview in here, and it's really always funny. think about him and Kumo cool D in the same. <laughs> yeah. that, but he, that's that's always. that's why but I can't think of one without the other. Honestly, <laughs> but here's what's funny. Trippy red is like you know I grew up. He's like I'm, I think he says like my mom listened to the oldies like Ja Rule, and I'm just like <laughs> the oldies, <laughs> yeah, but like, and like, it's oh, true. But I'm like falling out of my chair when he's telling me this, right? <laughs> It's interesting because Trippy Red only has rap music around him when he's growing up. From all that's, he takes it for granted that all music yeah. can be rap music. Oh, my my uncle, my mom, my dad, they listen to different forms of hip hop. Right. Kumo D doesn't have that. Right. Kumo D literally is like, I have soul music and I've got politics, right. and I'm a rapper, <laughs> so I'm just gonna mm, bring those right. together. That and is such that an intro. That is that is such a different way. That's why we're trying to grade rap now against rap and other times. How can you? Can't. Right. When everyone's built completely different culturally, you know? And the family tree is sprawling, and that's, that's that was the, the, goal. the goal to show. Awesome. It's an unconventional family tree of the whole thing. So more names for the audience before we wrap. Yeah, um, if you want to look this up, you go to New York Times. NYTimes.com slash hip hop 50. The whole okay, and there. so you, you have uh, Cameron, mm -hmm. Ladybug Mecca from Diggable Planets, uh, Styles P, Project Pat. Talking uh, Memphis talk. You mm -hmm. have Cool Keith, uh, Q Tip, mm -hmm. uh, Lil tip. Bibby, Scarface, Cardi B's in there, Cardi B, Bun B. Ice Spice, Roxanne Shante, uh, Fonte, Crazy Bone, Vanilla Bone. Ice, Vanilla Ice. I know. Slug. Can't tell, it's can't it's tell part of the story. story without Vanilla it's Ice. Part of the story. No, you can. It's it's. There's with, also a great story in there cool where he Keith. talks about beginning to have tension with MC Hammer when they're right on the tour moment, together. When they're on tour together, where Vanilla Ice is sort of on the come up and MC Hammer is up here, and that in intersection point where Ice takes over on the Billboard chart and how that affected their relationship, at least in Vanilla Ice's yeah, telling. See, this we is have one a suspicion MC tale. Hammer might tell a different version <laughs> of the story. Right. And what did, Ice, what did Vanilla Ice say? I said he showed up to the show the next day after his song replaced Hammer at number one and that his dressing room was in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, it smelled like turds. Yo, that, that is... I, by the way, I hope that story's true. It's that tremendous. Agree. I totally agree. And also that Hammer made Hammer it so the, sound guy, so the sound guy wouldn't put his volume up high enough. He was like, he, this is the Vanilla Ice level, and this, and this is, is where Hammer goes. Hammer that, by the way, that would be another... <laughs> that's so good. Wait, that's how you guys do it on the mic, Yes, right? like, exactly. Oh, he, he, like, he does. Is, is, there, is, there, is there a John Absolutely. and Joe level? Mine, mine goes high. Yeah, yeah by the way, you look... Here's why. But here's why. 
Because they're going to yell and talk over each other, and somebody's got to come in and govern. His is to cut through. That's yeah. what, that's the excuse. To win the argument. No, no, not, I don't, I don't no it's it. reasonable. It's reasonable, but you will notice on the days when Ebro's off, you're like, damn, Rosenberg sounds clear today. <laughs> sounds, <laughs> crisp. sounds so crisp. Like, so loud. Oh, my God. Uh, you also got Rizza, Big Kip, MC, uh, Big Gip, yeah. MC Light, uh, Paul Wall, mm-hmm. and Earl Sweatshirt. Crazy Bone. I mean, this is great. It's awesome, great. guys. Good work. Yeah, congrats. 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 Appreciate y'all having Joe us. Joe and John. John and Joe from the New York Times. What's up? Thank you guys have any else to plug? Podcast uh, show? Joe's yeah, book? Yeah, pod- Joe's book. Rap Capital. Uh, Paperbacks coming Peter out in has, October. Peter has been on my show, the Popcast. Yes. Uh, NYTimes.com slash Popcast. We do a video YouTube show, Popcast Deluxe, on the New York Times YouTube channel. So there's a lot of stuff. that come out? Uh, once, once a week, week every Wednesday. It's wow. coming out as we speak. It's coming right. out. What are you guys covering this week? Uh, we are covering the Lizzo situation, oh, the wow. Cardi B situation. We're covering Sinead O'Connor and Angus Cloud. Travis Scott. Travis, Travis Scott, Scott, Scott Playboy Cardi. Wow. Like, any yeah, this, this is like, right the, so you guys are doing like the smart, thoughtful, flashing lights extended. So it's like our news segment <laughs> turned yes. into a weekly yes. nerdy conversation. Well, no, you no, said no, it. We smart. didn't say it. Smarter, it, better. Well, we don't know. Research. Well, yeah. We don't know the it's story. It's not just like feelings about <laughs> things. It's actually. It's a little feeling. It's feelings. It's a little it's feeling. Wait, are you suggesting John's that? John's feelings and I'm fat. <laughs> okay, that's, okay, that's, right, that's fine. That's a good balance. I like it. It's a good balance. We just need to get a facts person. It will be really good. Thanks, guys. 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 Thanks, guys.